Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So today I have an asset I want to show you that I had a lot of fun making. So this is a design from the designer Alexander McQueen. Uh, I personally don't really follow fashion, but this guy's design is amazing. I would encourage you to check out his work if you're interested in character design. I find that he has a great eye to make shapes that really complement the human body. I personally have gotten a lot of inspiration by looking at his work and I thought that recreating one of his designs could be a really fun project to do. Again, we're going to focus on the problem solving process. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how I approach the base modeling of this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create an image plane for the only reference I have. I was trying to look for another reference from uh, the front to give me a better idea of the proportion, but I couldn't. This is the only photo I have, uh, but it's a good uh, side view. So I thought that I will be able to recreate everything from just this one view. So the first thing I do is to block out the basic proportion of the shoe using the image plane. Here I have set my image plane to live mode and also using quad draw to quickly block out the shape. After that it's done, I'm going to duplicate this shape for the left and the right side of the shoe and I'm going to connect those two planes into one object and uh, using lattice to shape the shoe into its proper shape. For right now, I'm going to keep the left side and the right side symmetrical. Uh, for a real shoe, that's definitely not the case because we have the right feet and the left feet. I'm guessing this one is the left feet. But I'm just going to keep it symmetrical because I know I have a lot of sculpting to do on the shoe and uh, I'm only going to sculpt on one side so I can still use symmetry. Since this is the only reference photo I have, I definitely have looked into other similar shape high heel shoes just to know uh, how curved the shoe is supposed to look from a different angle. After connecting the center of the shoe, I'm bringing it into ZBrush for further adjustments of the proportion. Like I mentioned in other videos, I find this is way faster than just keep pulling points inside of Maya. Since I do not really have the view from the front and the back of the shoe, so at certain uh, area, I do have to use my own imagination. After I'm happy with the general proportion of the shoe, I'm going to use curves to build out where the leather straps are. After that, I create a small cube shape that's roughly the width and the thickness of the leather and I'm going to use a face to extrude along the curve, just a regular extrude to create that shape. I'm going to repeat the same process for all the rest of the curves to get all my leather straps. For the circular area, I'm going to adjust the curve before I extrude.
Sometimes the extrusion create an extra piece of geometry, so normally I just delete those. After finishing the straps, I'm going to create a simple plane and just start to blocking out the shape of the kind of wing looking thing in front of the shoe. I'm just blocking out the shape from one angle right now and afterwards I have to go to the front and adjust the shape again and since I do not have a reference for what it looks like from the front so I have to kind of be creative a little bit and uh, make up the shape myself. I ended up changing the shape quite a bit and uh, give it a very broad outline because uh, my current plan is to actually make this geometry life that has a general curve that I want and actually I'm going to draw those uh, specific uh, kind of feather shape uh, geometry. After I finish the feather shape, I give it a little bit of a thickness and uh, I'm going to adjust all the parts that I built so far into place and fit a little bit better. So after I'm happy with that, the next thing I'm going to model is all the sewing patterns on this feather shape. That's probably one of the more puzzling piece of uh, the modeling because I consider using displacement for those things but I just don't think I could have gotten that kind of effect because those um, sewing pieces looks more like it's sitting on top of something. Um, I'm not, I wasn't sure if I were able to use displacement to create that effect and uh, I'm not sure how much work that is going to be. So in the end, I decided to actually using actual geometry for every piece of those, which sounds extremely tedious, but after observing the pattern, I realized that uh, a lot of parts are very repetitive. So I figured if I just build out one part, I can just duplicate them and placing, placing them around. I feel like in the end, it might be less work than uh, making displacement map for those and uh, it could look better in the end too. Now I have one group shape that ready to be placed, but I need to do one more thing before I start to placing those patterns. I'm going to give this feather shape a quick UV pass and I'm going to bring it into Mari and I'm going to project a photo on top so I have a good idea of how everything is laid out so I won't completely rely on my eye comparing the reference. For this projection, it's mostly for guiding purposes, so it does not have to be perfect. I'm just going to do it really quick. In the end, my geometry has a very different proportion compared to the photo, so while I was projecting, I'm also using lattice instead of Mari to drag things better into place. Now I have a really great guy inside of Maya. I'm just gonna start to work on placing everything into its proper place. One thing I forgot to mention is that I UV the first uh, tube shape 
before I ever started duplicating them. So that would be a good strategy to remember whenever you need to duplicate things for many, many times so that you don't have to do it after. I know this process can look extremely tedious, but in the end, I think I spent one day on it to finish the entire layout. And I feel like if I use displacement, I wouldn't say it would be faster and I wouldn't say the quality would be better. So this is what it looks like once it's all laid out. And uh, that will be the end of the base modeling process. And in the next video, we're gonna start to talk about the sculpting of the main shoe. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.